Oh, Friday descends on us. You can see the sun is right there. I'm melting. Good God. I'm hoping I'm protected. I'm safe from the rays of this starry ball of gas burning its way down into my environment. But I'm sure we're going to be just fine, my friends. Just fine. The summer is rolling in. Although it snowed three days ago. <laughs> Which is just one of those things that happens. <laughs> just one of those things that seemingly happens. Red hot sun followed by snow. The UK has got it all squared, man. We know what's going on. We know what's going on. How are we all doing? Are we ready for a nice relaxing Friday? Are we ready for a nice relaxing Friday? I know I am. I know I am. What is the sun you speak of? I can see it glaring through my window waiting to get me. To hurt me. To do something horrible to me. It's going to burn my skin and make me all red. I don't mind. I don't mind. I think it's going to be pretty good. I hope we're all doing tremendous. I hope we had a great week. I hope we're feeling really good. Especially after we found and played potentially the game of the year. Amazing stuff. It Takes Two. Fully recommend. Fully recommend on Steam. It Takes Two. Co-op game. So worth it, my friends. So, so worth it. What an utterly tremendous experience that is. You have somebody you can play with. And I know, especially at drama time, everyone is so coy about the fact that they have no friends online. Fs. Big sad. But if you can find one person out there. One person to call a pal. One person to spend some time with. Then I would recommend It Takes Two. You only have to buy one copy as well. Because the other person gets to play for free. So you can go half or do anything like that. But mm, what a game. What an absolutely tremendous game. I hope we are ready for this week's drama. I do have some sad news though. In, in an actual horrific twist of events. My family. These creatures that lurk around my presence. They want to take me out tonight. And I wanted to PTR test. But I'm not going to be able to. Because, <laughs> because they want to take me out. They want to treat me. They want to do a daddy night. I can't really say no because there's PTR testing up. <laughs> that feels bad, man. I can't really say no. I know. They, they, they want to spend time with me. They're like, can we take you out tonight? The kids have missed you. They've been on holiday this week. I've been home alone and they've been on vacation. Uh, and they would like to take me out. I know. We will do it. We will do it. There'll be plenty of raid testing to come. We will do it. So don't worry. If you copied your characters over and got ready, don't worry. We are going to be pugging it with the stream. We will get it done. This, I promise you, we will get it done. It just will not be tonight, because, yeah, I, I, I am obligated. Obligated, as the word may be. I have several stories in front of me, prepared by our good lady, Methuselah, in response to your emails, sending them in, or you can submit them on our website, in the drama section on preachgaming.com, whichever's easiest for you. Uh, I have a recommendation here from base. It's like, uh, you should check out the one that says, My shit raid leader killed my guild. <laughs> Shitty raid leaders tend to do that. They're full of ragers, greeders, monsters, uneducated, ignorant monsters from start to finish. And therefore, they can quite easily destroy a group of people. Usually does start with best intentions, though. We're going to make the best guild on the further every time. It's going to be a number one cutting edge, ahead of the curve, friendly PvP guild. It's going to be awesome. No drama. I honestly, I promise you, there should be no drama in this guild. If you have any issues, you should at all times. Bury it deep down and never talk about it. Uh, so we need... Um, do we need, a, we need a guild name. We need a guild name, our wonderful live audience that's here. Now, I'm a bit worried about the names that Bex has chosen for this one, which are Huber, Mr. Tumnus. <sighs> Thank you for your support. And Count Chubula. Had fun with this one, did we, Bex? <laughs> I had, one, I had fun with this one, did we? Uh, oh, Victorious Secrets. Oh, I like that. The Casual Toasters. Uh, okay, I, I like it. Yeah, we'll have... <sighs> the Relationship Book. The Chubby Chasers. Oh, does it have to be... Let's have Justice for Cutie. Yes, Justice for Cutie should be the name. I think that feels appropriate after today's events. Justice for Cutie should be the way we go. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's have fun with this one. Let's see what let's see what lies in store with us. I can see the word Canadian mentioned, so I doubt it's full of rages and maniacs. Hmm. Holla ballers and a fine hello to the judge, preach, and the court of the chat with their guilty hammers ready to smash my dreams. 
I loved all of your content and had the experience to finally be worthy to submit to the court, and I am elated to share it with you. Raise your gavels, my friends. Raise your gavels. Praise be. My question that I put to all the viewers watching now, am I the bad guy? <laughs> am I the bad guy? Did I? Are you the shitty raid leader? Oh, okay. Is the author the raid leader? Did I cause my guild to die? I know, despite being Canadian, that I can be a dick. But I believe myself to be an honest dick. If you know you're a bit of a dick, why not stop doing that? Just, just tossing it out as an idea. You know, I'm just going to put that out into the ether. Uh, if, you, if you know you're a dick, why not just not do that? You know? It's possible, you know? Yeah, it's pretty big brain, I know. A pretty huge brain on that one. I may be the person who swears a lot. <sighs> you're not righteous. And I'll joke with you in some next level troll ways, but I'm not a bad guy. Okay. I play Alliance. I apologize. You should apologize. I'm an Alliance prop paladin who is, of course, Kyrian. Praise be to the purpose. Divine Soul is the pog. And I was the main tank and guildmaster of my now dead guild, which is the context of this story. Okay. Me and a good friend were officers in our previous guild where the guildmaster, to describe him in the nicest possible way, was a giant, batshit crazy, drunk furry. That's a hell of a combo. He's giant, he's batshit crazy, he's drunk, and he's a furry. Who would argue with us for hours for no reason, then later cry. Actually cry and weep about how terrible it was that he argued with us that time. Yet you stuck it out. After we had enough of that lovely business, we decided to vacate and make our own guild for the Shadowlands. A proper guild, a righteous guild, a purposeful guild. Justice for Cutie was born. Surprisingly, when we made the swap and began constructing our new venture, all but three of our core mythic team from the old guild decided to come with us. We didn't poach anybody. They just decided to come. We merely said, hey, if you would like to join the brand new guild, then you can. That's it. We moved a few people to the officer positions. Five total officers. Seven. You had seven officers for a mythic raiding guild? That's like 50% of the raid team. What the fuck? <laughs> seven if you include myself and my co-GM friend, Count Chubula. We lost an officer to drama that revolved around another officer harassing female members. He got the boot quicker than I bothered to process the messages that were sending to me as evidence. So there is six of us. Five, that's a lot of officers. That is, my previous guild had three. <laughs> three. They wanted four, but nobody wanted the job. Can't imagine why that guild died. <laughs> Anybody want to be an officer? No. No, no thanks. You, you do all the work. It's fine. We were a casual guild who raided Heroic two nights a week. 8 till 11 p.m. That's a weird time. Wednesday to Thursday. We were aiming, of course, as many guilds do, for ahead of the curve and would progress mythic if we got cutting edge wicked smart. If not, we just had some fun. The other officers were super against any possibility that we treat the guild, in their words, as hardcore. Hmm. But what do they believe is hardcore? Now, this story mainly involves two of our officers. Right wonderful folks, I'd say. One who stepped down from officer to spend more time with his missus and take stress off his shoulders, Huber. And the other, our raid leader, our guiding light, Mr. Tumnus. <clears throat> now, our initial uh, breakthrough heroic went really well. The setup, our, uh, the setup for our raid leader, Mr. Tumnus, did for the first five bosses up to the council, crisp on point every fight was explained to the raid well with notes they could go over for reference and died with minimal pulls as progress does however once we reached the council of blood was when things got hairy mr tumnus had not prepared mr tumnus had created no notes mr tumnus had not prepared the weak auras not a drip so, as myself and Count Jubula and a healer of ours had pugged the further bosses for exposure and experience. I don't get this. I really don't get this. And so many of you do this. You're in heroic guilds that do worse than pugs. Which should never happen. Right? 
That should never happen. That should not realistically be a thing. That outside of your guild raids, you pug for better progression. Is that elitist? I don't think so. An organized guild of regular people should do better than a pug. I'm not surprised. I read about it every week. I'm not surprised. So, so many people do this. And it blows my mind. It really does. It blows my mind that the pug experience, in some cases, is better than the guild experience. So strange. Anyway. As myself, Count Chubular, and a healer, a healer of ours had pugged the father bosses for exposure and experience, Instagram likes, we had give suggestions on how to kill the boss. NSF instead of FNS. Oh, can I remember their names? It's been a while. Uh, Nikolai, Frida, and other guy yes stavros <laughs> is he called stavros <laughs> I believe he's, he, stavros yes he's called stavros excellent instead of frida nikolai stavros where to position and went to lust and frida was last easy game i can't remember how we did it on heroic it was a while ago mr tumnus our mighty raid leader took personal offense didn't like this one a little bit and Mr. Chubula, of being controlling and taking over the raid after giving him suggestions for the strat he had not even bothered to research, he proceeded to accuse us of being hardcore elitists because we'd been pugging. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing more hardcore and elitist than pugging heroic raids. That's pretty next level shit. All right? You're kind of a nerd at that point. Pretty elitist to start pugging heroic. We never intended to upset him, as you can imagine. We apologized for making him feel, and since they were just suggestions of what we could do, we moved on. However, the strategy uh, our unresearched and unlearned friend was employing was bad, to say the least. And we had to give more suggestions. When we got to Sludge Fist, no plan, no strats, no notes, nothing from our esteemed raid leader. And so suggestions were being given again. We had several raiders come to us with concerns about how our progress had kind of, you know, gone badly. They were successfully pugging and killing things, but could not kill for multiple weeks as a guild. We brought these issues to the other officers, and it seemed like Mr. Tumnus had a plan. He's going to fix our problems. It isn't right that the pugs are outplaying our guild. We're going to sort it out. Here comes the week after we barely, and I mean really barely, scrape past the big sludge fish. And in one night, we one tap everything up to Stone Legion Generals. And there before us stands everybody's favorite Castle Nathria boss, the generals themselves. The worst boss fight I've ever had to experience in all my time of World of Warcraft, dating back to my days in classic World of Warcraft. Here I was under the understanding that my concerns our raiders had brought us were going to be solved. The preparation issues would be fixed. We're not going to run into this issue again. And so there we are, all gathered up at raid time, staring at these godforsaken gargoyles waiting for the timer to come. In rocks our boy, Mr. Tumnus. And the first thing he says when he keys up in that Discord is, All right, lads, just let you know, I don't... Has anyone done this? Because I haven't prepared anything for this boss. Just let you know, I've not looked at it. I didn't think we'd get here this quickly. I was going to do it tomorrow. So, that's how it is. Alright? What? Are you fucking kidding me? You have nothing ready again? Even though we were clearly going to get here? Really? I was livid. I was spamming officer chat in the caps. Count Chubula was equally pissed and proceeded to take over the explanation of the fight. <sighs> At this point, we were basically just doing his job for him. We get all ready to pull and it was a right fucking calamity. Stone Legion Generals is bad enough at times due to the nature of it being wank. But when people smooth brain the fight, unreal. Wicked Blade was flying everywhere every goddamn time. Not cleansing the bleeds, not soaking, fucking up eruption placements and soaks and killing each other with upheaval. As you can imagine, the raiders who brought up issues with the performance of our progression were fuming that this is what they were witnessing. Our second raid night of three hours was a complete and utter waste of time for everybody who had bothered to show up. 
It wasn't fun. Nobody was telling jokes. It was just not like our guild. Of course, I called for an immediate officer meeting and exploded in Discord. We had literally gone over this just last week. We literally dealt with this issue already. We had agreed to resolve it. You agreed to resolve it. And you apparently did absolutely nothing at all. I'm now receiving whispers from raiders saying that they're kind of getting tired. If things don't improve, they're just going to go and raid somewhere else, despite them not wanting to. They like the guild, but they can't play like this. It was requested in the pink that if Mr. Tumnus cannot commit to raid leader, then maybe he should step down. Maybe she wants to fill his boots. It was agreed yet again for the second time. It's going to be solved. And Stole Legion generals, after many a wipe, did eventually die. Praise be. And there we were, stood in front of the big man himself. Sire Denathrius, looking right down our throats. A fun fight, and 100% easier than the shit show that is the Stone Legion Generals. You know what I'm expecting to happen. At this point, I'm hesitant for actual change, as it seems Count Chubula and I are being ignored, and everything we were suggesting or talking about was being controlling or hardcore, in the words of Mr. Tumnus. And surprise, surprise... Here comes Mr. Raid Leader himself, the Big Tumnus. I've read the Dungeon Journal, but I'm not exactly sure what we should be doing as a team. Now at this point, Count Jubular has killed Sire in a pug, and is the only member of our guild that has as head of the curve. So he starts chipping in. Based on the suggestions he's hearing, Mr. Tumnus devises his own sire strat on the fly. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> he says, based on what he's heard, that the best play for us would be only using three healers. That night we failed to even reach phase two. Forty minutes we're plowing our faces into phase one of heroic side and Atreus. We're trying to be polite, you see. And I can see in the chat right now is how? How? And we're trying to be polite. He is our raid leader and he did lead as well for half of this raid. Surely he can see the problems. But after the forty minutes is up, we start keying up and laying in some suggestions that maybe we should use four healers considering we're all dying from lack of healing. Our raid leader does something very bizarre. He decides that considering we all know what's best, he's going to stop calling out mechanics and mutes his microphone for the remainder of the night. As it was, Chubula begins raid leading on the fly. And we did not get to see Fates 3. I love a good raid leader that mutes his microphone. That's fucking genius. I imagine everybody in that raid is feeling super good. What a point you've proven. Right? You've proven such a point. It really is. Everybody just loves having you around now. Of course, Officer Chat is a fucking swamp. Chubular has decided after tonight he's not even raiding anymore. He can't be fucking bothered. It's become stressful and it's not fun. This released the floodgates as every single raider who voiced concerns proceeded to say their goodbyes as they already had a place to go. Slowly but surely, our officers, including motherfucking Mr. Tumnus, all leave as well. Saying that he found raid leading too stressful and he wants to go to a guild where he can just be a DPS. In the course of 45 minutes, all but four members of our raid team have left the guild. 16 people. 45 minutes. I hold no hard feelings for people feeling the need to find a new raid team and thought everything was good as everyone included in their goodbye messages, which they would stick around with us as a community, and they still wanted to play with everyone and be friends. Send me your B-net, please. However, two weeks go by and not a single person, minus the six people, have used the Discord or even spoken to myself. 
Jubular had been recruited by a semi-hardcore guild on a different realm. Three members who were all going to quit if they weren't raiding joined with him under references he gave. Then all of a sudden, all but one person joins this one singular guild. Chubular and myself find this rather fishy because he only vouched for four members, but 11 more came over within less than 24 hours. They even made a separate Discord server as they didn't feel like they could use the new guild's Discord to talk to each other. This, my friends, in the words of Among Us, was kind of sus. Well, I was figuring out what I could do. Do I rebuild? Do I go find a new guild myself? Or do I just take a little break from World of Warcraft? Jubular had forwarded me to his new guildmaster under the suggestion of applying for a raid spot for the rest of the tier. So I reached out as I would rather play with my friends than be a guildmaster. All is well and good, and she is going over my logs to see which mythic raid team could use my paladin. Three days later, she sends me a message saying, Due to not wanting drama from the old guild to come over, I was not to be invited. At least for now. I'm confused. What drama? What did I do? With who? Very sus. Chubula didn't know either. So he donned his detective hat. I sent an essay to this Discord they made that had all the members that left calling out anyone who had any issues detailing that transparency was preached for in the old guild to be transparent now. Now this evolved into a full-blown argument, which I had the pleasure of listening to the outraging comms of a friends that would pop into my Discord and, and have a little chat. Apparently, this is how it played out, ladies and gents. Huber and Mr. Tumnus had some beef with me, but failed to tell me about it. But they were very angry, silently angry, except with each other, and decided that they disliked me so much that they planned to murder my guild and take every single raid member they could to this other guild. Then when they found out that I had been asked to come over, they had a conversation with the guild master saying that there was massive drama in our old guild caused by me. And that I should be barred from joining. Now of course as you can imagine. This is news to me. They had all posted goodbye messages. No hard feelings. Let's be battle net bros. We'll miss you. We'll still play together. I love the community. My friend Chubular exploded in the discord. Along with a few others. Calling them out on their high school level bullshit. That they were pulling. This was utter bullshit. I had the pleasure of discovering that people I thought were friends were actually two-faced fucks who hated me behind closed doors. It was especially enlightening to see the officers who preached no hardcore at all welcome in this guild immediately join a hardcore guild when the opportunity arose. People who screamed about transparency and fairness amongst its members didn't have the fucking stones to tell me that they had a problem with me. Now, what were the issues they had? One of them they brought up was me muting my mic on a bad day as I didn't want to bring negativity to the raid night. <laughs> well, I'm killing the guild for this. I am killing the guild for this. He's having a bad day. Mutes his mic. And he's not raid leading. I'm killing the guild. I mean, there's no logical expl There's no other logical course of action at this point. I must kill that guild. Now, having found this kind of stuff out, of course, I, I'd had it with the nonsense. Several others who are also tired of whatever the fuck was going on in that new Discord where it was all kicking off. I've been thinking of going back to the Horde as it was clearly a, a big pile of bullshit to be Alliance in the first place. <laughs> Upon my suggestions, several others said, Yeah, okay, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I will go Horde too. They just wanted to play somewhere where there wasn't a massive drama. <laughs> the same people moving around. <laughs> it's always drama wherever we go. Let's stay together and keep moving. <laughs> It was decided then and there, fuck these clowns and their circus. We're going to make the decision we should have made before and go over to the big horde team. So off we were, faction changing, server changing from Storm Rage uh, over to Area 52. My Lightforged Drenai realized his final form and became what he was always meant to be, a Tauren Paladin. 
rebuilding as a new guild with seven of the remaining old raid team. Clearly some of the officers I had were not the people I thought they were. I definitely didn't see this coming when building the guild and laying the foundations for our Shadowlands success. However, when my guild went into the realm of death, it enjoyed it there so much it decided it wanted to die as well. Pretty sure on every one of you listening to this, with your little guilty hammers ready, <laughs> actually they're preemptively ready, to smash in the chat, please give me your verdict of whether or not it was my fault the guild died. Was I a shitty GM? Was Tumnus a shitty raid leader who ruined the raiders' times in Castle Nathrian, concocted with Hubert to murder and poach my guild? Please let me know. Thank you for taking the time to read my little drama on the Shadowlands. Well, as the judge, I still don't know what you did. You left that conveniently out of the story. Now, perhaps you don't know. It is possible that you do not know exactly what it is you did. But we do not know what you did. Do I believe for an instant that these two people raged and saw fit to bully and badger and kill a guild because on a raid night you muted your mic once? I do not believe that. I do not believe that one little moment. No, I don't. So I cannot call judgment on this. I can call guilty. Because it's a valid reason. It's not a valid reason. Not a valid reason. Every now and again, someone has a bad throat. Doesn't want to talk for the night in the raid. Luckily, you have, you know, 19 other people there. This guild had at least 20 people, as we know. I think you're leaving out a piece of the story. Yes, I do. So for now, I will withhold judgment. If you want to, or if the other members of this guild are listening right now, if you would like to fill us in on exactly what happened, then I will indeed render judgment on this situation. However, as it stands right now, I don't know what you did. I don't know what you did, and it seems conveniently left out to me because your story makes you sound so, so innocent. So innocent. Pure as snow. What, is there piss in that snow? Is there piss in that snow? I want to know. Is it yellow? I want to know. As innocent as a toy of its played alliance? I mean, that's a guilty charge from the start. Hmm. My suspicions, my spider sense is tingling that there's more to this. All right. We have a pinata joining us in this one. I will await judgment on our previous story. This is called The Misunderstanding. Oh my god. Well, imagine having a conversation to clear up a misunderstanding. Uh, <laughs> imagine. Imagine. The Misunderstanding is where we're going now. Piss in the snow. Part of me is saying something is missing. The other side of me is saying people actually freak out over anything, so it's totally possible he's innocent. Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. I find it... Maybe I'm... Maybe it's my naivety, but I find it hard to believe that you could cut an entire plan to murder a guild based on your GM not being on comms for a night, right? That seems a little extreme, but gamers can be a little extreme. <laughs> that can happen. All right, let's move on. Oh, sweet Jesus. It's an Irish story. Top of the morning to you. Hello, ballers, preacher, and all those lovely audience members of yours. This story is coming to you from across the waters of the Emerald Isle. Ireland. Which part? I have been watching your channel for such a long time, since I was a wee little nub and clearing putricide in the Ice Crown Citadel on normal mode, and that was the height of my skill level. Don't you say that as a Welsh person, Jack. I'm a long time warrior main since those days, and while I am used to maining prop warrior, I've become a Fury Arms chopper boy. I've become more competent watching your videos over the years and got my first cutting edge recently in Niall Othar and will be progressing Mythic Denathrius starting Wednesday. Well done, dude. Well done. For the story itself, this drama was all the way back in Uldia in the good old, everybody's favourite, Battle for Andor Azeroth. And I was trying to transition from Heroic Raider to Mythic. You know the struggle. I do. I can't imagine what it's like for anybody who's only ever raided heroic stepping into mythic now. I imagine a lot. I, well, in fact, I know a lot of you have done it, but it's got to be rough. It's got to be fucking rough, man. <laughs> it's got to be so rough. Like, oh God, <laughs> everything kills you now. Great. <laughs> this story deals with one angry Tauran holy paladin named Pinata. Oh my God, is this the other guy? Oh no, the other guy was protection, wasn't he? He was a Tauran protection paladin. 
All right, a Turin holy paladin named Pinata. To lay some context of our little raid group, we're not the best. We are capable of clearing all of heroic consistently and a few mythic bosses. In Legion, we beat Kingaroth, Mythic Antorus, but the Council of Shavara and Varimathras just took too much coordination for us to overcome. You couldn't kill Mythic Varimathras, really. You just killed the man. You kill the man, and then there's a man coming, and you kill that man, and that's it. That's Mythic Baramathras in a nutshell. You just get, trust me, I've been raid led through that with that as being the only word spoken by the raid leader is just kill the man. And it worked perfectly. We clapped that boss. <laughs> it's so easier. Now, you might expect drama and tension to start between healers and their tank in the middle of Mythic progression where stakes are high and any mistake being repeated could cause 10 to 20 minutes of re-clearing. I bet you might think this was the case of Gahoon being too much for people to handle with mind control explosions and such riddling the fight. Nope. We're not even... Okay. <laughs> what? No. The boss that rocked our world was Heroic Zool. Huh. This is a new one. <laughs> Heroic Damn Zool killed our team. Oh, God. Really? Heroic Zool? Like Mythic Zool? No, Mythic Zool is kind of cheese. Uh, okay. Alright, some people seem to predict this. Maybe this is an era of rage struggle I'm not familiar with. Fair enough, I will keep an open mind. Heroic Zool? You just sheep some shit and kill it, right? Now, you might remember that phase one of Zool was all about dem ads, and this part of the fight really wasn't so bad. Sure, we wiped once or twice through mismanaging CC, but it wasn't that bad. That's what I was thinking. Phase 2, however, was an absolute burn phase. Yeah, where the tanks had to drop blood stacks out of the raid, which rapidly filled up the room, so the tanks had to kite them out to survive. Yeah. I, as a prop warrior, could leap out and then have a healer dispel me and charge back in, all efficient-like. However, I was playing with a wheelchair class. <laughs> My co-tank was a blood DK. <laughs> so mean. Gateway, there's so many things you can do, right? There's so many things you can do. I, I, our main tank was a Blood Death Knight. He was, I think he played Blood there. Might have played Vengeance, actually. Uh, a Blood DK was struggling. A little with Wraithwalk being the only movement increase. Yeah, but you've got Tiger's Lost. You... All right, I'm, I'm just... Now, we weren't a bad guild, but we did expect to kill Zul in the first week or two of progression. But it, that didn't happen. We were becoming hard stuck. On phase two, this is blowing my mind. If I remember right, it took us two full nights to kill Zul Heroic, and the tensions were mounting. On one particular pull late in the second night, we got through phase one with relative ease, and Zul went into his Super Saiyan blood ritual form. We popped Hero and began zerging ourselves and had him quickly approaching the last 10%. However, he began trucking my blood DK off tank, and she quickly died while trying to kite out the stacks to the side allowing blood to form over most of the platform. We kept fighting, pushing for the kill. 7%, 6%, it was going down fast. However, I was getting higher and higher on blood stacks. 5%, 4% on the boss, and I knew I was about to fall. Eventually, about five or six stacks, I tried to leap out and call for a dispel, but before I could, our angry Tauren Holy Paladin Piñata played bop on me, dispelling me while I was in the middle of the raid. <laughs> blood went everywhere. Oh, he was panicked. Oh, don't hate on him. He was panicked. He was trying to do what was best. It was a massacre. He was just a panicking paladin, man. He was trying to do what was best. He knew you were about to die. Oh, poor piñata here. You've wiped two nights and he's going to get the entire blame for this. I, I already feel bad. It was an absolute bloodbath and slew the whole raid. Zul stood proudly over our corpses with a measly 2% health left. Now, surprisingly, the mood seemed high after this. I think the sheer ridiculousness of the wipe just gave everyone a bit of levity and a bit of a giggle. I laughingly made the remark, man, that shit was everywhere over TeamSpeak, which I was soon to realize was the phrase that would end our guild. You see... Pinata instantly went to the pink. 
His opening comment was... What do you mean, shit? Did you... Do you think I put shit on you? Confused, I whispered back. I meant the blood, you know? When the blood went off. And it went everywhere. It was pretty funny, right? And yeah, I wasn't having that. If you think blessing and protection is shit, then I will never bop you again. I was still... I was... <laughs> I was really confused, and I still am to this day. Now, if I had legitimately made a remark that upset Pinata, I would have apologized on the spot. But I swear to you, I swear to you, and I am not looking for judgment here. Preach on the audience. I was just talking about the blood on the platform. That's it. I absolutely swear to you, there was nothing targeted at Pinata. The only reasonable thing I can think of is somehow Pinata heard it's a man that was shit or something like that. It also didn't really help that the rest of the guild were memeing him hardcore. All right, that's what he's salty about, right? It's not you specifically. It's that everybody is calling him the fucking t the, the teeny bopper, right? Mr. Tank Bopper. That's what's pissing him off. Is the <laughs> he's getting bants to death, it's like being clubbed outside of a outside of a party with a gang full of boppers. We pushed through. We did kill Zul that night. A few pulls later, but Pinata. Would never be friendly with me ever again. I was upset. I had known Pinata since Mists of Pandaria. And he had never, ever reacted like this before. I didn't want to pry too much. In case something was bothering him IRL. It was that out of character. And so I decided I'm just going to let it go. All the came and went. And we did pretty disappointingly overall. Coming from Kingaroth Mythic in Legion, we only managed to kill Talok, Mother, and Zek Voz in Mythic Aldea, with Fetid just being too big of a huge dick, and Vectis taking us down with the original COVID strain. True. Honestly, I thought things had gone back to normal between me and Pinata. But later in the expansion, we stood in front of Mythic Opulence. In what should have been and is highly regarded as one of the most fun bosses in BFA. While we're assigning healers, Pinata pipes up saying he will not heal my side. Now, <laughs> oh god. However, our raid leader had me tanking on the melee first half, and it was better to have paladins due to all the melee being in proximity. They insisted it was best this way. While this was being explained to Pinata that it made no sense for him not to be on the other side, he left the raid, and we had to stop raiding that night. Across all of our raiders... A huge W, T, and an F fell over us like a cloud. No one knew why he had left. And people started asking me, as he had brought up specifically, he did not want to heal on the same side I was. Asking me what I had said to him. What had I done to him? I legitimately had no idea. Now I should point out here, that the, the meme of the bop on Zul was still regularly brought up in raids. As a joke! <laughs> I had stopped bringing it up long time ago, as it seemed to be a sensitive topic for our boy Pinata, but guilds be memeing. Guilds do be like that. Even a priest he was friends with memed him occasionally. Anytime we were close to a brand new progress kill, normal, heroic, or whatever, people would say, Pinata, don't bop us. Please. Maybe that had gotten to him. I had thought at the time, decided to whisper Pinata about what happened, only to discover he had literally put me on ignore. <laughs> I had known this man for near eight years at this point. Eight years I had known him. And I never learned exactly what it was that I had apparently done. We continued progressing opulence for another week, but just could not seem to get them gems to go right and kept failing. On one particular pull, when we could see the light at the end of the tunnel, I was bopped. Oh my god. <laughs> he 
was waiting for his mum. <laughs> that is the long con, man. That is the long play. Oh, that is hilarious. Got him. <laughs> Got him. I've waited so long for this moment. Oh, that is genius. I was suddenly bopped and opulence turned around and began meleeing the raid. People began dying in swats. Left and right they fell. I know, I know, I'm a tank, I should have a bot cancel aura, and now I do have one, permanently macroed, but due to this time, I wasn't ready, I wasn't prepared. Opulence murdered our raid in its entirety, and a message popped up in the pink, from Piñata. Do you still think bop is shit? Followed by the G-quit? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man, that is a grudge! That is a grudge. You've got to respect it. That is a slow burn grudge, that is. You don't find many of them these days. You don't. You have to go long and far to hold a grudge like that. Whoa, that is a whopper. The entire raid team was stunned. We stopped progressing for the night and began uh, being on a fairly dead server. Eventually broke up. And I found myself moving to another mythic guild during Nihilotha. I tried, and I swear to you all right now, listening to this, I tried to reach out to Pinata and his friend the priest who also left when I found their characters on other servers. They had kept their same names, so while progress made it easy enough, Pinata only ever replied to me once. And he just said, who's shit now, fuckface? And I was put back on ignore. Thankfully, nowadays, I found myself a cutting-edge guild and progressing Castle Nathria as an arms warrior, condemning my way to victory. I want to say the people in this guild weren't really bad people. Some were just more ready for Mythic than others and a little more mature. This story I wanted to tell you is just about a particular moment that I still, to this day, don't understand. What I did I do? Thanks for reading my story, Mike. You didn't do anything. Rest easy on it. You did nothing. You did nothing at all. You did nothing. You're fine. If everything you say here is true, you didn't do anything. They took it the wrong way, and then they let that shit burn. They let it burn. They let it burn like the smoldering embers of a coal barbecue, man. They let it burn and burn and fester, and there is nothing worse than someone festering on an idea for months and months and months. Oh, man. Dwelling on it. Ugh. Getting worse and worse by the second. Uh, what? For. what's this one uh oh my god this one's got <laughs> which one did you say here uh hell is other dps true <laughs> true hell is other dps although i i have seen there's a story in here that is uh has a picture of a wolf in it kind of curious i have to save that for next week let's see hell is other dps true next story <laughs> and tanks actually hell is other dps and tanks. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we need... Oh, several names for this one. I like the DPS. Rawlings! Worf! Hope to see you, Mr. Worf. Marius. Uh, G oh, how do I say this? Gopher? Can anyone help me with this one? I don't want to get your name wrong. I want to say gopher. Does that sound right? And the bearded bard. Gotcha. Does that sound right? Gopher? Thank you for the subs, guys, while we're doing this. Actually nervous? Oh, God. <laughs> Why? <laughs> gopher? Like that. Gopher. Okay. All right, then. Let's go. <clears throat> Holla ballers to you, preacher, and your bitter chat. What? Bitter? They're not bitter. They're just seasoned. Well experienced. That's all they are. First, I would like to introduce myself and set the scene a little. I am a Frost DK. <sighs> a Frost DK main, born and bred. That's going to get you a lot of guilties around here. <laughs> I joined very late at the end of the cursed expansion that is the Warlords of Draenor. Still better than BFA. And from the wait time between boss pools, I found my calling. 
Legion arrived, and from here I took the fight to the enemy to defend my home of Azeroth, to siege the mauve walls of the Nighthold, and retrieve the glorious convergence of Fate's trinket, which I never got, and embrace the mauled over and over again, thanks to a Shadow Priest friend popping Surrender to Madness and dying every fight. But let us move forward through those early days, to possibly the most painful expansion I've ever played, the Battle for Azeroth. Here was where I made my move, my friends. I joined the head of the Curve Guild, and from this point onward, I bring forth a mighty tale of an incredibly boring insurgency. <laughs> an incredibly boring insurgency. A racist idiot. A sexist feet enthusiast. And a complete twat of a tank. Okay, we've got multiple guilty potentials here, guys. This is a four times guilty potential. Hammers at the ready. Our story begins with Mythic Nihilotha during the tumultuous and nervous period of our guild at the time. The officers, in their moment, were finding it harder and harder to balance the work-game balance, as so many adults often do, and found ourselves unable to recruit to progress due to the inability to provide activity from the officers who simply did not have the time. And so our first two characters, a warlock named Rawlings and our main tank, a vengeance demon hunter named Worf, began a plot with several of the members to form a coup against the existing officers and start afresh, as so many guilds do, with new officers leading the team, who promise to be online, who promise to be active <laughs> in the guild. It went well. For a time, we progressed Nihilotha to 5 out of 12 Mythic, stopping after Hive Mind due to burnout, and decided to return to Mythic in the Shadowlands, since we farmed so late in BFA's last patch. As pre-patch came, we decided on just casually doing heroic until the Shadowlands arrived. Recruiting all the while during the wonderful drive of the pre-patch engagement boost when so many players return in readiness for our brand new expansion. During this fresh break for our guild, since I didn't consider myself part of the main guild clique, I only spoke once briefly with Worf in which he suggested making me an officer. No thank you. I appreciate the offer, but no. I understood there must be better players, more deserving of being an officer in this new re new regime. As the launch of Shadowlands arrived, I pulled my usual all-nighter, as we all do, as I, and capped my character on the very first night of having access to the game. In an effort to gear my character as fast as I could and be ready to support my guild in any way possible, I completed all the requirements for those early days, as to get into the raid as prepared as possible. I followed guides for any and all information on boss tactics and located where my desired legendaries could be found. So here we are. Nathria, first day. Normal mode. We're going in. We ventured into the dark depths of Denathrius's lair to quickly find a butchered bat at our boots. We then decided our progressing, on progressing Sun King Salvation soon after. There, we ran into our first glaring obvious issue. The boss began to spawn a lot of ads. It soon came to points within the fight that after the first DPS burst, we would quickly be overwhelmed and wiped soon after, usually to a tank death. Are you not healing the boss? Do you know how it works? We decided to stop progressing Sun King normal. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> oh, man, that fucking sucks. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. He gave up on Sun King normal? Oh, <laughs> that's grim. That's grim. Oh, that's an oof. <laughs> that's a really sad state. We decided to switch over to Huntsman Ultimore, which we failed at a similar number of times. We failed normal Huntsman as well. Where were you? Was your previous progress? Were you like a mythic knight? Was it mythic knight Lothar you did? I was, right? Yeah, 5 out of 12. You can do mythic hive mind. You can't do normal sun king. <clears throat> Let's strap in, boys. This is going to get ugly. <clears throat> we decided to switch bosses to Huntsman Ultimore, which we, which we failed. At a similar number of times, because one of our unholy DKs believed it wise to apply his disease to the shades of Vargas, praise be. Followed by resolving this issue, we killed it swiftly. Post uh, past the first raid week, with only two bosses dead, you killed two bosses in normal on your first raid week. Form a mythic guild. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! It dawned on us. <laughs> After we reviewed the logs of our first effort since the Castle Nathria, we had given ourselves one fatal flaw. We had recruited a lot of shitters. 
That'll happen. If you recruit everybody leading to a new expansion, that will happen. That will happen. We had recruited a lot in the lead up to the Shadowlands. We had a 30 person raid. Most of them were trials. We had in fact recruited so much it had become too much for the Nathria to take on at once. Grossly overtuning the fights past our ability. Nine people sat with grey logs for our first normal Shriekwing kill. I was asked to join the officer discord with Worf and Rawlings. They had already discussed bringing me along as an officer between them, and between my callouts, my serviceable performance, and my knowledge of the blessed tactics, they decided immediately I should be an officer. And for me to decide myself what my officer role should be that should serve the guild the best. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're going to be an officer. Now, what that means is up to you. Yeah, pass. <laughs> <laughs> pass <laughs> pass that how best can you serve the guild okay sure uh i will be in charge of skittles and jelly beans that's how best i decided you fucking mug oh my god this is such a mug i decided that i would be the raid and social officer <laughs> okay you're a better man than i i'll tell you that for now i ain't doing that no way <laughs> you opted into that role jesus christ can't convince half the players of this game to do that this in effect soon made me the co-raid leader what the fuck is a co-raid leader with me and wharf taking turns me and wharf taking turns on the bosses that we would learn the tactics for meaning that we only had to learn half the fights and we would never be unprepared for any one of the fights That's a head tiller, that is. I've never heard of anything like that in my fucking life. Yeah, why? Why wouldn't you just do it together in half the time and know all the bosses? Right? What if one of you isn't there? You just don't know what to do? I also wasn't going to stand around Oribos or recruiting, because I considered that less than officer work. <laughs> As an officer of the guild, I shan't be spamming no macros and orbos. Oh, no, 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 no. That is for plebs. That is, that is for the dregs of the guild. <laughs> to be spamming the macros. Following this disastrous time and a large exodus of some of our more skilled players who couldn't be fucked with the bad players. That's what happens. Your good players are going to leave. Uh, we quickly cleared normal and began moving on to heroic. Shriekwing, as you can probably imagine, was a piece of piss. And I scored one of my first logs above 95 to my delight but the guild still needed new blood as required of our eventual desire to go to the hallowed halls of mythic difficulty in this we recruited a player named marius now marius is a warrior an interesting warrior marius had some interesting political sensitivities oh sweet jesus <laughs> he would also do things like talk in general chat regularly <laughs> Uh -uh. Hey everybody in general Worf is a girl Who just got into WoW And is looking for tips on her tanking Slash whisper her now for a 10k gold gift From her simp Rawlings <laughs> Much to our annoyance as raid leaders Halfway through the tier, our guild name, due to the possibility of being linked to a popular pawn site, received a, re received a request from Blizzard for a change. In this, we took suggestions from our guildies. Marius thought it clever to come up with an anagram of a very racially insensitive word. With such bangers on the table like McDonald's Esports. That's where you went immediately. <clears throat> now look. Everybody likes a bit of banter in Raid Voice Channel. But this this man goes and puts straight up racist stuff in our guild chat and Discord. Rawlings quickly had a word with him. Clarifying that we are not going to do that. And we don't tolerate that. He soon apologized and promised that he would do better to improve his behavior. And most of the officers thought, dealt with, right? <laughs> I still have my trepidations about him, however. I suggested just kick him, right? 
Just remove him. Like, what's the point? <laughs> Let's just get rid of him. The other officers believed I was being too hasty. And gamers do have gamer words that is acceptable in some places. And we should just give him a chance. Now, to his credit, he did stop with direct racism, which is an improvement. But he seemed to try and find loopholes, beginning with somewhat less racist stereotyping. Believing all northern, northern people are crackheads, southerners are all pedophiles, and the Greek and Russians are all scammers and thieves. He wasn't actually from the UK, he was based in Portugal, making me wonder where the fuck he'd even got any of this from. As we progressed the heroic Stone Legion generals, a large part of our guild found they needed to gear their alts up, and soon a casual raid team was formed within the guild. In one of our first raid nights, I, having only one character, was brought along to raid lead. I was tired and desperate to get this unrewarding effort done with, slogged through the normal run with our undergeared DPS, running them through tactics until we reached Sludgy Boy. Now, in this raid, as my sort of fee for coming along, I had brought along one of my IRL friends, who was the only one still in my friendship group who was actually still playing World of Warcraft. To be honest, he wasn't good. He lacked performance, he lacked preparation, but he turned up, he did what he was told, and he didn't offend anyone. Anyone apart from Marius, that is. Marius was playing his freshly dinged monk alt, hoping to be the absolute blaster in his words of the guild, but was similarly doing poorly. Prior to Sludgefist, he mentioned that if he was linked to the rogue, my friend, he would instantly kill both of them. To laugh from the rest of us, because of course no one would actually do that. Upon our pull and after the first pillar, he actually did it. And for other non-specific reasons, we eventually wiped. Following this, I said, haha, funny joke, but let's not do that again. As even their minor DPS might help the raid go faster. In a silent rage of being asked not to do anything annoying, like murder other members of the raid team, he ran into Sludgefist and engaged the boss in a brave effort of single combat. Nevertheless, I was tired by this point, and upon seeing this, I removed him from the raid group and prevented him from joining the main raid night Discord channel. I'm sure he's going to take this super well. I can't imagine him. I'm sure he's just going to go, yeah, you know what? I was a bit of a dick that night. I'm just going to take the message. I'm going to reflect on it. I'm going to go to bed and turn over a new leaf, and tomorrow will be a fresh day. I'm sure that's how Marius will react. Marius started screaming about how controlling and that I was essentially a Nazi. <laughs> he rage quit the guild on both his main and his alt. Honestly, we kind of breathe a nice, uh, a nice sigh of relief. <sighs> Good stuff. Moving on from this obviously tragic loss of Marius, we find ourselves at a much uglier, uglier war on the face of our guild. Our Windwalker monk, Gopfert. Gopfert was the sort of player who knew one important detail about World of Warcraft. And that was how big numbers can go. Because they can go very, very large. No tactics unless randomly assigned to him by the game's blessed algorithm. He only cared about how he could abuse his keyboard to do the absolute most damage. Gopfert was a personal friend of Worf and as such was always guaranteed a raid spot regardless of any issues. I once assigned him to do the biggest task he'd ever been asked to do in World of Warcraft. Move a seed on heroic Zymox. As a Windwalker monk. Hmm. Our group was not the most mobile. So it was the obvious choice. I whispered him. I was met with silence. Then I received a message from Worf. To assign somebody else. <laughs> but my He's making me do tactics. Another annoying habit that our boy had here was rapidly clicking the feast to try, in his words, be the first to use it. Wasting tens of thousands of golds as our feast would quickly disappear upon being placed for the first time. Leading the officers wondering, what the hell is going on with the feasts? Are they bugged? Until we discovered the food buff rapidly flicking on and off on his character. <laughs> He got warned by Worf to stop, and that ended the mystery. 
But I think before we realized this and someone cottoned onto the buff on his character, he had wasted somewhere in the region of 300,000 gold on feasts that had to be rebought due to his inability to function as a normal human being. I don't think he realized what he was doing. To be fair, it sounds like he just doesn't know that that's going to happen, right? He's just fucking spam clicking it. He doesn't understand what's going to happen. To be fair, I don't think he knows. His worst offense, though. His worst, his absolute worst offense. An idiot, for sure, but just an ignorant one. Was when we recruited a girl to the guild. Oh, God. Did you choose these names, Bex? We, when we recruited a girl to the guild who went by the name of the Bearded Bard. Now, on our first, one of our first uh, raid nights, Bearded Bard was very quiet, leading to some members of the guild starting an immature bet. If they could convince the woman to call them Daddy. Mainly by use of renaming their details nicknames. When P.I. Oh, when P.I. was called. Oh, that's smart, actually. I don't agree with the joke, but the technique is sound. <laughs> the technique is actually on point since she was a holy priest needless to say this bet never got paid the beginning of Gopfert's end began soon after when after a raid night in slash e slash em why bex now where are you bex where are you why did you why did you want me to read this because this is disgusting <laughs> I feel bad that this is going to come, this is about to happen. And I can't stop the story now because we're here. You're not funny. All right. Okay. <clears throat> the beginning of Gottfried's End began soon after. When after a raid night, for no apparent reason whatsoever, Gottfried decided to do slash EM spurts his glorious load over bearded bard's feet. And there it is. There, there's the words. It came out of my mouth. And, uh, I mean... You know, that's where we're at. <laughs> Needless to say, after Gopfert led with this outburst, <laughs> bid if she left the guild. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. A decision I do not blame her for in the slightest, as Gopfert's position as Worf's friend gave him essential immunity from the punishment Marius faced. With his harassment target gone, Gopfert soon got bored, thankfully, and decided to quit a couple of weeks later. Problem is now, now we've lost these gems of players... We lacked the DPS for Mythic. And after already clearing Heroic, many of our raiders started to feel bored from attempting to try with our guild, and we began hemorrhaging players week on week. To the point where I sat in Castle Nathria general track recruiting. Oh, you're recruiting in Castle Nathria? Often seeing Marius in there, who upon recognizing me would try to get the entire chat to start spamming me. And so the guild began its death. We stuck to clearing Heroic week on week, hoping to finally find the required players we needed for DPS. Until one week during a skipped Heroic run, where we killed Stone Legion generals and moved on the Denathrius, wherein as I, co-raid leader, found myself speaking alone and missing the voice of the other raid leader, Worf. I whispered him if he was there, to which he replied, Unfortunately. And I asked if he could help with some of the calls and things. He came on the Discord, sighed, and began helping me with callouts on Denathrius. We downed the boss on one pull after he began assisting me, and we finally had enough members to move into Mythic, barring a few pugs. We began our pulls of Mythic Shriekwing. First hitting 70%. He <laughs> wiped at 70%? Oh, I guess. Yeah, that can happen. The second 50% when Worf messaged me saying he was feeling off and was going to leave the raid. I said, sure, take the night. If you're not feeling great, take the time you need. I wouldn't force him to stay up through pain if he was physically ill. He left the raid group at 10 to 9. And as we sat there and began searching for a tank, I called a break for everyone to get up, have a smoke at the window, usual stuff. 10 minutes passed, and when I came back with no warning in the slightest, Worf had posted he was stopping raiding and stopping play WoW to play other games. Well, there it is. I was now the sole raid leader. I called the officers into our private officer chat to discuss what had just happened, and that while we were annoyed it had, it had come at a really inopportune time, his distaste for how the game was playing was obvious, and we didn't judge him for deciding to quit, and the raid ended shortly after so we could sort things out. The next raid, I logged on WoW with the other officers to do some recruiting and keys when I saw Worf on a character named Worf on a different realm in Castle Nathria. <laughs> the classic. I just don't... Uh, I think we're just going to take a break. I'm just going to leave the game. Yeah. 
just not working out, you know. So I'm gonna take a break. It's nothing against you guys or anything. It's just that I just don't want to play. Just don't want to play. That's what. Even knowing he had most of us on his friends list, he lied to our faces about his reasons for leaving, uh, cut our raid night short, and gutted our guild of one of its core members, one of our raid leaders, and tanks. Needless to say, I was a little bit fucking pissed. I began looking up his character on Warcraft logs and started at the pettiest thing and started at the pettiest I could go. I started making fun of his logs. He was getting six sixes to nines on his newly created hunter, on the majority of bosses with his new guild, despite having killed them upwards of ten times on his DH. Receiving no reply, I logged off after he wouldn't take my bait. Upon waking up, I found myself muted. Here I stand, preacher. <clears throat> no jizz on my feet. With our guild on the brink of death. Our main tank gone. Abandoned with no decent recruitment options in sight, and we ended our tier. I get my guild died at Mythic Shriekwing. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hearing my tale. And thank you for your produ production of wonderful content over the years. And a good night to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, the sadness. We do bump into these rather strange people. What possesses a guy to emote that? Like, un un there's just no prompt for it, right? There's no lead in. There's no. There's nothing. And he stands there and he types that into his keyboard and just pushes the button. What in God's name? Unreal. Anyway, that just brings to the end of streaming for today and tonight, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, I was going to do the PTR, but my family is taking me out to dinner. Uh, we are definitely back on Monday, going to finish It Takes Two. I fully recommend it. For anybody looking for a game to play with a friend or a buddy, It Takes Two is likely to be one of the games of the year. Go and check it out. Don't spoil yourself of what it's about. I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you for a wonderful week. It has been awesome. And remember, tonight, for those of you, we are putting out our first Big Friday feature video. It's our first piece of content made by Mr. Nups. I hope you check it out uh, and enjoy it. It's not on World of Warcraft. It's going to be some stuff we're doing on other games. I really hope you'll like it. It's been a, a labor of love. Let's put it there. All right? Be good. I'll see you soon. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.